I first met today's guest back in 2017 in a cast versus fans quiz in Manchester, while I almost immediately put my foot in it by telling her about how much we were always slagging off Toya on the podcast for constantly going on about wanting a baby. Five years later and Toya may still be childless, but at least she's gained a new fan in me and has become one of my favourite characters of the current cast. Here to chat about Toya's recent trial and tribulations is someone who I have the honour of saying has become one of my best friends of the past few years. It's the supremely talented and wonderful Georgia Taylor. Hello, Georgia. Oh, hi, Michael. That's such a nice um, intro. That, That's was, a, really that was a long one, wasn't it? I didn't realise before when I wrote oh. that, that went on. But all yeah. true, all true. You it, have forgiven me for that that comment five years ago, haven't you? Um, I think we've definitely moved past that. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again. How are you? good yeah good yeah it only seems like weeks a week ago that we were together last well it wasn't it was yeah it a week pretty ago? much <laughs> I think <laughs> it was about a week ago since I saw you last <laughs> but but we, we we need to talk now because Toya's been up to all sorts hasn't she bit of a tense week for her last week yes a very tense week it's so weird for me because we um as you know we're obviously a few weeks ahead but with that stuff for some reason we were even further ahead so mm. We did you you on- filmed that back in the beginning, was it beginning, middle of July or something? Yeah, beginning of July. Yeah, um, yeah we're talking like, what, 10 weeks or something? Yeah, because so- I remember you there posing out on the steps with your Conversation Street water bottle. It certainly was. I was like, if these paps are going to get anything, they're going to get me with my, with my nice orange thermos, which they did. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it was weird watching it because it just, it felt like a million years ago and so much has happened since then. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, you've and you found innocent as well. So, I mean, let's get straight to it. Do you think the jury made the right decision? Well, so interestingly, so I, you know, we talk a lot about um, my mom, Caroline, yeah. my real mom, and mm-hmm. her thing. So I saw, I went to see her on Friday, and she was really funny because when I opened, she opened the door and she like enveloped me in this hug and she went, Oh, I can't believe you're going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, Went, what are you talking about I went I'm my mom and she went well I think you are and I was like why well I'm not gonna tell you I was like why why do you think that isn't true oh you, you're gonna go you're gonna go to prison and you're not gonna be on the telly all oh, this and shit. it was me <laughs> I was like well look, I'm not gonna tell you um but then interestingly then my dad chipped in and he doesn't really watch Cory all that much but hmm. he was oh it's ridiculous he, he didn't even die in the car he, he, he got out, he had a heart attack later, it, nothing to do with, they couldn't even, how could they prove that at all this, that he was getting all, <laughs> he was like my defence barrister. Um, I think, I'll tell you what I think, um, if 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 this was a real court case, okay, we have to suspend disbelief a little we bit, do, because it's, you know, but there wasn't really that much evidence, it was basically no. just people, Toya's horrible, she's a horrible person, and actually, he said she would kill him. Yeah, exactly. So really, if if you look at the at the evidence and the whole beyond reasonable doubt, it's like there wasn't actually that much evidence, was there? You know, <laughs> we did it for the drama, and that's why people watch soaps and they they enjoy it and love it. Um, yeah, I was so, still surprised by the confession though that that Toya actually did do it on purpose. You know, you know from listening to the podcast and everything that we were expecting there to be some mega twist about all what happened in the final seconds, but no, you just drove into the the building. No, I know. I felt bad for you guys because all the weird <laughs> theories about poisoned and stuff and yeah. all, all this. And I was thinking, no, nah, it's really not going to be that. Um, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know about the confession, I think, until I actually got that script. So, um, yeah, I didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, and I, I didn't. I still there was still some ambiguity for me, even playing her over how guilty she was. And I've spoken about that. You know what I mean? But I've said it's a really tricky, it's like a, it's shades of grey, it's not It's not black and white for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she, she has still lied in court about when she found out about Imran's lies, hasn't she? Yes, she has committed perjury, hasn't she? Yes. Do you think that she regrets that or, you know, will she regret it? Um, What I will say is, and you know this, is that soap moves on very fast. <laughs> So, and now she has a distraction in the form of a uh, spider yes. and lots of other things going on. So I think 
you know, I don't know, maybe we will explore that at some point in the future of her gills and but I also know that we we need to keep a pace going mm. with the show and it can't be too much about looking backwards in a soap. It has to be looking forwards. Yeah. Oh, very, very well put. So mm. I, I've seen I've seen lots of conflicting opinions online about what Toya did during that car drive. But one thing I have seen universal praise for is your performance during those court scenes. So how did you feel before filming them, knowing you were going to have to go through some pretty tough stuff? Well, I guess it was just the culmination of everything I've been doing all year, really. Because mm. it's been the um, traumatic few months uh, for Toya. So it, I was just like, oh, God, more misery. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was it was a bit of a slog, I'll be honest, because I remember the week that we were in uh, Bolton in the courts. Mm. So it was a huge, I think we were only there for, was it three days? It was a, quite a lot to pack in. And what I also filmed that week was the protest outside the factory. Oh. And it was all in the same week. And honestly, I felt like my That was a was busy full. week. It was the busiest week. And it was just okay. jumping from like doing the court stuff. And then we did the, the um, protest later in the week. So I was just all over the place and I was exhausted. I mean, I enjoy it. I do love my job. You know that. So yeah. I don't want off being like a moaning mini because I do love my job <laughs> but it was really tiring um mm. and yeah again like last time we were in Bolton Court it was really hot um, <laughs> and I was back in I was like how am I back in this glass box <laughs> again after I sat with, with Millie Gibson in that glass box for two weeks last year and I was like how am I back here again good um, job you had your conversation street water bottles to keep you hydrated yeah. isn't it Exactly. Stay <laughs> hydrated. I had my little fan that, that our lovely makeup department gave me so I could give myself a, li a little fan. But um, Did, did yeah, that I water mean, help you summon those tears on cue as well? Because uh, yeah. you did squeeze out a few, didn't you, for those episodes? You can't, you can't produce the, the, the tears if you haven't got the liquid going in. I mean, that's just some sort of basic science probably probably, <laughs> probably is yeah I mean I mean just saying that we know that Jane Danson is also very good at your mate Jane she she's had a bit yeah. of a tough time this past year hasn't she but I mean it's, it's been you that's taken center stage over her which has been a really nice change I think is, did she give you any advice about how to cope with this pretty relentless schedule that you've had these past 12 months or so no do you know what she's just we're both hugely supportive of each other, as you know. She's one of my absolute best friends in the world. Mm. And I think it's just, we, we try and sort of just be there for each other in, in kind of emotional support, but also in a practical way of whether it's like, you know, picking up a coffee for someone or just, you know, is there anything that the other person can do to make your day a bit easier? Or, you know, she'll offer to like run lines with me or, you know, just it's all those little things mm. that together, in the package of the wonderful Jane Dance and just makes her like the best, you know, friend and and castmate. Yeah. Um so yeah, she wouldn't, she definitely wouldn't wouldn't give me advice on like say how to play things. But I think it, just knowing that she understood what it feels like when you get those scripts and when you get your schedule and you see you're doing 35 scenes a week and you go, <laughs> well that's my on Scotland my lines. Okay, that's fine. You know what I mean? So she just understood the kind of the process of it really. Mm -hmm. and of course you didn't have lovely Charlie there to help you anymore after he was gone either did you I mean how he, he's, he spoke earlier this year about deciding to leave and how you were one of the first people that he told about it do you remember what it was like when he told you he, he wanted to hang up that famous grey checkered coat for good I do because I don't know if he told you this but I thought I'd upset him so it no, was he hasn't it, told me that no okay so, so sweet <laughs> so, we've been we've been like filming um and it was <clears throat> yeah this was ages it was like a year before we left or something yeah. and um, and he kind of was a bit sort of sheepish and a bit quiet and he came up to me and I was like are you okay and he went um yeah can I just can I just like have a, 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 a talk with you and and I was like yeah sure um and at the time that was it we were still in all the COVID things so we were still mm. all distance and everything we weren't we didn't have our chairs in the green room so I was like, yeah, of course. I said, do you want to like go outside and we'll sit on, in fact, we sat on two different benches, I think. So we were like, <laughs> you know, it was, we were still being so strict at work and so careful. Um, and as I was walking down, he just had this like nervous energy. And I thought, oh God, I thought, have I done something to upset him? And I was thinking about the scenes we'd done that day. And I thought, oh God, was I like, 
was I overbearing or was I like bossy or was I, I, I don't know. I just started just yeah. panicking, going, what have I done something to upset him? And if I have, I hope I can make it right. And I was like, are you okay? And he went, yeah, I just have got something to tell you. And then he told me and I was like, oh love, okay, this is, and then I felt firstly relieved that I hadn't upset him. So I thought yeah. I'd done something. And then I totally understood it. And, mm. but, um, but yeah, and so I just was like, I'm here for you. I get it. I've, I've done it myself a couple of times. I left Corey. Mm -hmm. I was in casualty for many years. I made the decision to leave that. So I understand. So I was like, you know, and obviously we'll keep it secret for now. I actually ended up keeping it secret for months and months. Yeah. Um, but I was, yeah, I was like, I'm, you know, support you and I'll be sorry to see you go, but I want to see you flourish. And yeah, so that was that. Yeah. Which he is. He's doing very well in his play at the moment, isn't he? It's terrific. Yeah, because they stood up in tickets available still for a new matinee yeah. performance. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so he's he's gone. It's really sad. And um. But you've you've still had you still had Millie. You could love lovely Millie. Uh, I, I know that she's not had so many scenes with you. But um. We I don't think because because it's been so long since you've been on the podcast for a chat. I don't think we've had a chance to speak about the Imran and Toya and Kelly. So um. Now's your chance. Tell me about your relationship with her and just why she's so great, basically. I mean, I saw her yesterday. I, I met her for brunch yesterday. Mm. Oh, God, I can't say enough about that girl. She's absolutely golden, honestly. And they put us together, and we ha we hardly... I mean, we weren't together for very long, the three of no. us, but we straight away. Because, as you know, you've met her. She's um, she's incredibly um, sweet and kind. She's also funny. She's whip-smart, that girl. She's mm. so smart, wise beyond her years. Um. And I'm just like, I'm just besotted with her. I just, I want her to just, just be happy and do well. And I just, I see so much potential in her. And I just yeah, think everything awesome. just seems effortless. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, I honestly, I don't want to overstate the point, but I could see her being like the next Jodie Comer. I mean, seriously, I think, you know, she's 18. Like, how is she, I know. how is she? that quality day in day out and she's 18 it just blows my mind yeah and, and with a big week coming up this week as well she's been great did you, did you watch um you seen yesterday's episode you caught up yes of course oh, yes, stuff with rick Nealon as well oh, oh, I'm loving it. It. I'm absolutely loving it mm -hmm. i think it's great I, I can't wait to see how it all plays yeah. out but, but no toy and spider yet this week but i think we still need to talk about spider don't we how long was it after Charlie said that he was leaving, that you heard that um, that Martin would be rejoining the cast. So I found out at the same time as um, Charlie, actually, because we were having a Zoom with Ian, our producer, mm. and that was just before Christmas last year. So it was maybe like end of November time last year. Yeah. And he talked just through what was going to happen and the crash and Toya, did she murder, did she not? And then he also went on to say... And then spiders coming out. So he was dropping these bombshells, like left, right, and center. And I was like, this is too, I can't take this in. I'm just trying to get my head around the fact that Imran's going to die. And now you're telling me that a spider's coming back. It's yeah, too much. Yeah, in the replacement. Yeah, I mean, talk about one in, one, you know, one out, one in. Yeah. <laughs> it's been nice working with him again, though. He did have a lovely things to say about you last week, as you know. So nice. I mean, I've just, I've been... It's not too spoiler we've said. I've been in, in his presence today. Um been with him not. Um and yeah, it's just he's just a sweetheart. He's just, you know, he's he's so supportive. He's like the kind of person you want to work with. He's very supportive. He's a team player. He's loving being back and having that enthusiasm. I think that's good for everyone because I think whatever job you're in, however much you love it, you, you know, you can get a bit cynical, you can get a bit tired when you've been busy. And you get someone who's like, effectively, he's like new blood in that he's bringing yeah. all boundless energy. And it kind of just, it makes you lift yourself up to their level because you go, oh, God, yeah, this, yeah, God, we're we lucky to work here. What, this is a great place. And we were talking, I was doing a scene with them, with Julia Golding today. And she said that, she just went, oh, I love my job. And I was like, so do I. And we just had this kind of real moment of going, yeah. this is just best place in the world to work um but yeah and he's but he's loving it so mm. yeah and I yeah he's great I'm I'm so lucky because you know I've had Chris Gascoigne phenomenal actor beautiful human Charlie just an absolute dream boat um you know and just like lovely actor all you know all the good things I can say about him I could go on for days as you know um and Martin 
is just a dream. So I'm, I just feel really lucky. I've had, I, you know, I'm getting all the good ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you, um, but obviously Spider's still got this secret from Toya, hasn't he? Now, mm -hmm. I, I don't know where you are in terms of like filming or anything. So, you, uh, so maybe you can't say, but how do you think that she'll react when she finds out that yet again, a man has been keeping secrets from her? She's going to be fuming, let's be honest. Um, it's <laughs> yet another man, more lies, more betrayal. Um, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, I, I think she's going to be um, furious. I mean, look, this could, this could be the end for them, mm. I'd say. Is definitely but they seem like they're meant to be together. I'm sorry, Imran. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> but no, Toya and Spider are, are a pretty good couple. They're a pretty classic soap couple. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, sure. And you know, you know how these things work in soap. It's like often relationships are kind of on off, on off. Will they won't they? Mm. You know, will obstacles in their path, will they overcome them? Um, and that's just kind of just part of the sort of the, the blueprint of, of of how we tell stories in soap is we, we've yeah. got that long form storytelling. So mm -hmm. you can see the the ups and downs in a relationship. And um so yeah, I think, you know, I'm not saying that they do split up, um, because you are spoiler free and I'm giving you no secrets. <laughs> um but I'm saying that if they did, it doesn't mean it would be forever because we, yeah. you know, yeah you, you're also you are getting you, you mentioned chris gascoigne earlier you get the toy is getting quite cozy to peter at the moment isn't she yeah do you know what i've loved it because chris and i so we had all that huge storyline together with baby susie and everything and then we just never worked we didn't work together for like three years no. and um and i missed him um i mean obviously i see him in the green room and it, you know out and about and stuff but i was like yeah i miss love working with him so just having this little sort of friendship of you know enough time has passed so they can be friends and they're both kind of over you know I mean let's be honest they've both been through a lot of drama since they were together <laughs> um, so yeah I think it's nice to keep that kind of sense of history and that feels yeah. really thick and it really does feel like such a long time ago that you two were together in the Rovers doesn't it I mean do you, do you wish that you'd ever you know been able to have a bit of a longer shot as landlady um, no, not, you know my feelings on this, Michael. Um, <laughs> I know, I, I want you to say it on record. You know what, <laughs> it's an incredible privilege to be a landlady of the Rovers. Yeah. I just personally don't think that Toya was necessarily a good fit at that time, mm. is what I would say. Yeah. Um, it, I think I think it was kind of sold to me that it was going to be sort of the three sisters running the yeah that was be... great I love that yeah, exactly now that worked so the kind of the Eva to and Leanne the dynamic between those three that was great but we just didn't have enough of it because what happened was the baby drama took over mm. so it be less about the dynamic and the chemistry between these three very different independent strong women running a business together and it just became about hiding a secret baby you, mm. you know what I mean so I think it's a shame because perhaps that was a missed opportunity. And I think as a threesome, we were strong. Yeah. But I think I think the the baby, the Susie stuff kind of took yeah. away from that. And 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 you did give way to a, a very good Rover's landlady as well in oh, general. Ab absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So very I was more than happy to pass yeah. that battle there. I really was. And I, and I also I know you're you're a bit of an avid Cory fan anyway, aren't you? Not not just being in the show, but you you love to watch it. So it must be nice to know that you know there's only a short list of landladies, and and you're one of them. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure if you ask the average person on the street or the average Cory viewer, they would. There's a fair chance they might have forgotten that Toya was. Because <laughs> honestly, sometimes I forget myself. But yeah, you can't change what is written mm. in the kind. of history books of Coronation Street so yeah I guess I'll I guess I'll, I'll always have that. Mm. Do, you, do you think it helps you as a performer to also be a fan of the show? Oh that's a really good question oh gosh I don't know you know I don't know um I think I think what being a fan gives you is it gives you all it gives you a certain um you hold the show in a certain esteem you have a certain respect for the show before you walk through those doors so I think that's no bad thing um yeah I don't know maybe being a fan I mean we're so led by the writing but I think understanding um 
the kind of makeup of that show and the kind of the balance of of of, of comedy and drama and um just the kind of almost the, the language and the rhythms of scenes sometimes that it does have mm -hmm. its own style I guess so I think being familiar with that maybe on some level makes it easier to make that transition into oh this is you know this is this kind of job and you, yeah. you know every acting job requires different parts of your kind of your, you know your, your your skills to be to be used I guess mm. um so and you yeah, know your I mean, mum's watching as well, don't you? Because uh, she's also a bit of a fan. Oh, she loves <laughs> it. Always oh, got lots to say. Hello to Dodger's mum. We hear all about your opinions. <laughs> yeah, the theories that Caroline comes out with, honestly, I can't. But I'll tell you what else she always does, that thing. She was doing this on Friday. Is when something comes out, she always goes, well, I knew that. I said that. And I'm like, you didn't know. You said I mean, you said something that was the complete, literally the complete opposite of what happened. <laughs> but she and it's like you know how nice to be able to do a job that makes your parents proud like yeah. what you're doing like that's a really nice feeling so yeah and she loves it when I'm on the telly mags and you know on the front of a tv choice or whatever she yeah so <laughs> she must have been fuming when Imran had that one night stand with Abby well I don't know because she's such a big fan of Abby and such Is a she? big fan of Abby and quite rightly <laughs> um so I don't know that she was as bothered as she should be, maybe. But no, she loves she she loves Sal. She's like, oh, she's fantastic. Oh, she's a wonderful actress, which she absolutely is. And I always I'll tell Sally, I'll, I'll like message her and stuff. And um, I remember at the NTAs, was it when Sal was up for an award and she had this beautiful like red sequin dress on? Yeah, um, I think that was NTAs last year. Yeah. My mum was like called me and she said, oh my god. I couldn't take my eyes off her. She was like breathtaking. So I messaged Sal straight and I was like, I have to patch because she was going, will you tell her? And I went, mum, I will tell her. <laughs> so I messaged her. I was like, oh, I'm just saying you look so incredible and she couldn't take her eyes off you. And she was like, oh, that's really sweet. So <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she's she's a big fan of of, of Abby and, and yeah. Sally Carmen. Yeah. As are you, you you're, quite, you're very close friends with Sal as well, aren't you? So it must've been nice to have had so many scenes with her this year, you, even though oh, you've right. been at loggerheads <laughs> for no. some of them. Literally it was cracking and I loved it because she's an absolute powerhouse so the fact that I get to work with her and Jane Danson I'm mm. like oh, two of the strongest um actresses on tv I would go so far as to say so yeah. the fact that I got to be kind of especially when the truth came out and then there were scenes that were just a bit more fiery where I was kind of going for her um, you know you're going to get so much back from from that other person so mm. it was a true yeah. Do you think that um, going forward, Alfie and Abby are going to be much of a part of Toya's Toya's uh, story? I don't know. I don't know. I think I think it will be referenced and I hope it won't be forgotten because I don't think it should be. But I don't know that it's going to be. I don't know. There's going to be loads of it, but maybe. Do you know what? Hopefully when it's things like the anniversary of. Imran's death or the anniversary of Imran and Toya's wedding or you know hopefully the, the script writers will you know they have all these these dates and things you know they're, they're aware of them aren't they with um so yeah hope maybe maybe they would be the moments when there could be a little scene with um you know the three of them yeah I mean Imran's death the, the anniversary of that is probably the anniversary of many a disaster really what with it being Britain's Got Talent Week things just so happen to happen in Weatherfield at the end of May early June so you never know I mean if you live on that street I would say just go on holiday at that yeah. time of year that's a good yeah. time to go <laughs> um I, I can't remember who it was was it Leanne maybe last week said on the program that She's that Toya has robbed Alfie of a father and what's he going to say when he grows up? So I wonder whether, you know, if if you and Alfie and, and Abby are still in it years down the line, there's going to be a bit of a story where he finds out what Toya's done. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, because they had quite recently, wasn't it? Jack only recently found out that... Mm. that about, about, Jack... um, about Molly, yeah. Yeah, and that was like, how many years later? 12 years later or something. So, I mean, yeah, of course, who knows? I think as long as... You know, if, if the characters are still in the show, um, there's every possibility that that we can we can reference those things for sure. Did you uh, did you enjoy filming the crash? I mean, that was that your biggest Corey stunt? Yes, yeah, because I wasn't in mm. I wasn't in the show when they did like the tram crash or anything. No, um, 
Oh God, we loved it. Yeah, because it was it was Charlie's last week and we were on location for the whole week. And mm. it just felt like we were a film. We felt like we were making a film. And we just, yeah, we just had so much fun. We had such a laugh. Um, lovely team, lovely crew, director, all our ADs, just the whole team, makeup, cost, you know, everyone. Um, yeah, it just felt a bit special. And it was a bit like we'd been allowed out to play. You know, we, we were a whole week away from the studios. It was like, yeah, it was like we were on some kind of crazy crazy school trip or something <laughs> so um i i <clears throat> excuse me what what would you like what would you like uh to see in toya's future going forward now that this chapter of her life has has come to a close yeah i think the first thing i want to see is i want to see her get a job <laughs> yeah that is true actually you scrounger what are you up to <laughs> scrounger come on now <laughs> I don't, okay, I suppose it's fine for me to say, I don't really want her to go back into sales at the factory because I don't really think it was right, but, you know, storyline, potential, just being at death. I don't really feel like my greatest moments that Toya being in the factory. I mean, I, I reckon I could count on both hands the number of factory scenes I actually had. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, were think, you, what was your job actually? That did, did we ever find out what exactly your job title was? I just said something on the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> phone in underworld no i'd like to see her get a job and i would like it to be somewhere um like i don't know like in in the service industry i'm, I'm thinking like the corner shop or the bistro or somewhere where i can interact with lots of different characters because that's the job and i remember this from working in roy's roles especially yeah. when i was there is you get to interact with everybody. And mm. I think that's something I'd really like because I feel like Toy's world has been very small. Yeah. And as much as I love having my little gang of, you know, say Jane and Ben and Martin, it's also fun to just stretch those muscles with, you know, other people. And mm. so that's kind of my, my main thing for her at the moment is I want her to just get out there a bit more and have scenes with, and just get a job, woman. Come on now. I'd like to see her have a bit of fun as well. A few more oh. smiles. Oh, oh. <laughs> seriously, we, we all crave these big dramatic storylines. And I was, you know, more than anyone, I was banging on that door going, can I have a storyline, please? Um, <laughs> it's been great. But yeah, now I'm like, now you flip the other way and you go, oh, I just want to do some fun. Yeah, yeah. So it's been nearly six years now since you've been back in Coronation Street. What would you say has been your highlight of the time? Oh, I don't know if I could pick one. I like. I would. You want me to pick one? No, no. You pick. You can pick a few. Go on then. I'll let you. Oh gosh, I think obviously. I mean, although it, I know it wasn't necessarily everyone's cup of tea, but I did. I enjoyed the baby Susie storyline because I loved working with Kath and Chris, mm. um, and it was my first big story when I came back into the show. Um. So that obviously, the stuff that I've done in the last year, all the stuff with Charlie and Millie. Um, even I mean it was kind of like a sweet little story and it only lasted a few hours but when we got a we got a baby for Christmas yeah baby Mason baby Mason was kind of sweet um oh, so, yeah. Elsie was so sweet as well oh she was adorable was I wish we'd had more with her with oh, Arabella no. you never yeah. you never know it, it might still happen <laughs> yeah this you is and true doing the little spiderlings <laughs> yeah exactly so but, um, just just before we finish, Georgia, can, can we just get it on record here that you have got no plans to follow in Charlie's footsteps and leave the show anytime soon? Because I don't think I could bear it. Um, yeah, I've got no plans to leave anytime soon, depending on what your definition of soon is. <gasps> um, Do no, this for me. No, listen, because... No, 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 it's fine. I am, I am, I'm signed up there for a little while and I'm thrilled to be so. But as is always the case with these things, it's not just my decision. No. So I really don't take it for granted because, you know, <laughs> say, the user comes in and they go, right, I'm going to get rid of X, Y, and Z. And if you happen to be one of those people, you know, then... So, yeah, I, I, I'm great. I'm, all I can say is at the moment, I'm really happy there. Fantastic. So. Well, it has been lovely speaking to you again, Georgia. Okay. Of course, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on and doing a Zoom with me as well. It's your first kind of street Zoom, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, my pleasure. That's exciting. Well, I will I'll now let you go and let you get on with your evening. Because we've got, we got some curry to watch tonight, haven't we? So we better get to it. A few lines to learn for tomorrow as well, so we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, I'll see you then. All Much right, love. Love. love from Gemma. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.